and welcome back for another edition of Dirt Road Divinity. I'm your host, Lisa Wade, and I have a guest in studio. This is Jim. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, I'm Jim, J Jim uh, and I recently returned from um, from a bit of a of a sacred pilgrimage of sorts. And uh, we wanted to spend the next two podcast episodes actually sharing with you about some of our experiences. So today we're going to talk a bit about the week we spent in Scotland. And then for the next episode, we'll talk about the week we spent in Ireland. You game for this? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. That'd I think great. we almost need a warning label. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By the fits of almost. laughter. Yeah, yeah almost. Got our <laughs> fourth take to get started because we were laughing, but yeah. we're good now. Are we? <laughs> But no, really, no, yeah. no, no, no. so warning, uh, there may be a lot of laughter through this. There may be a little bit of, um, I'm not going to say throwing each other under the bus, but revealing certain facts that may have happened during the trip that could be humorous or slightly embarrassing. <laughs> what are the two? Mainly they're about me. So <laughs> it's a matter of how much he's uh, in the mood to, to, <laughs> to mess with me. Um, but I do hope you enjoy this conversation. We had a great time. It was amazing. Yeah. And this was, you know, we've, we've done some other things together, mm -hmm. uh, but this was the first time that we've planned and uh, gone on a big international trip together. It was. It was an epic adventure. I think um, maybe even more so for me than for you, because you've traveled, you've done Egypt, you've kind of done some things around the world. I haven't done a lot of that. So um, yeah, I'm, we'll talk about planning in a minute, but that was part of the fun for me was the actual planning of the trip. But it was definitely an adventure. That's the way mm -hmm. I would categorize. Definitely adventure. And, you know, I think that sometimes uh, different people can bring different things into what drives their vacations or their adventures or travels. And um, for a lot of people, it's like rest and relaxation and getting away from the world and a reset. And that was not this trip at all. No. No. <laughs> it was like with purpose. Yes. But the purpose, what, what was the purpose for you? Well, that's a great question. Um, I actually was thinking as you're talking, um, I don't know if you've, you've shared with some of your listeners that you had done a retreat a while back and mm -hmm. um, I had a chance to participate in that retreat. And in that retreat, we talked about values. And so you think about those things that really drive you. And, and the one that I kept coming back to before we went is this concept of wonder. Mm. How it's, an, it's important for me, one of my values is to experience wonder in life. So I think as, as I thought about the trip, it was really with that in mind, to be awestruck or to be really appreciate whether whether that was was beauty sort of natural beauty which we saw a lot of mm -hmm. whether that was medieval history which I'm which I'm a fan of as well which I'm, I'm sure you'll talk more about that um but those things that really were were unique and awe-inspiring so so for me it was the chance to experience that wonder and that sense of adventure mm. was what kind of drove me yeah. What about, what about I love you? I love that. Well, Jim is learning that often when I pl start planning a trip or make a decision to go somewhere, I will often start getting what I call divine assignments. So it's like a tap on the shoulder from spirit to say, hey, need your help. Please do this. And so that was <clears throat> kind of woven through yes, a absolutely. lot of a lot of what we did and actually um, how we planned as well, because often I'll I'll, I'll know like big picture places like okay so we're going to Ireland and Scotland and that's all I'll know <laughs> and so then Jim here is uh engineer by nature and also trade and very spreadsheet driven so this our is the spreadsheet our, our trip had a spreadsheet bible to go along with it and um I, I'm more pendulum driven so <laughs> we tease about being the spreadsheet and the pendulum when it comes to how we kind of make, I don't know about make decisions, but, but kind of operate in the world. I'm more intuitively based and he, how would you describe how you do it? Well, I would also say that I'm intuitively based, but mm -hmm. it, from a numbers perspective, yeah. right. Which, which may not make sense to some people. Um, but it's, it's one of those things that, that by kind of understanding the options and the different pieces, I feel like that level of control or understanding gives me the freedom Mm -hmm. to to explore within that space and then I think what was really fascinating about this pro there were a couple things that were really fascinating to me about the process one one was when we planned it 
how we came at it. Cause I kind of came at it wanting to see a lot of castles, a lot of history things. You had that, but also these intuitive spiritual things that you want to weave in. And, and, and so I thought it actually came together very nicely in the plan. So the way that we put the plan, we floated very well to kind of flex it. And, and so it was, it was fascinating to me how we could kind of come from different perspectives yet I thought the planning process came together very easily. And in fact, it was a ton of fun yeah. <laughs> to do the planning. Yeah. I, I agree with that. The plan yeah. was so much fun. And I love the fact that, you know, taking, it, giving it structure, giving it structure allowed almost like a container for more magic and free flow to happen, which seems counterintuitive. But had we gone over just this chaotic, let's see where everything goes kind of approach, we, there's no way we could have seen and done all the things that we did and see, you know, and saw. Yeah. And so, um, you know, in the very beginning, starting out, there's no way, for example, we can see everything there is to see in Scotland in a week. It just can't happen. And so, you know, from the very beginning, I kind of brought out the old pendulum and I would point to a map and go, hey, do we need to go here? Yes or no? Do we need to go here? Mm -hmm. How about here? How about here? And that was really kind of how you know, from, from the biggest picture perspective that, you know, and, and we did travel books, of course, we're going to, of course, we're going to research, but so we did a ton of research, a lot more books than that. Um, but really started getting a feel for where are the important places for us to go, knowing that there's castles all over, there's history all over. And are there other places that are super relevant or that might be related to a divine assignment? Mm -hmm. And so that that's kind of how we started. And the fact that this is all new to him, but he was so, you were so willing to just go, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that, you know, a lot of it was honoring the other person's perspective, yeah. right? Cause it was, it was different yeah. and your approach was different, but it was also creative. And what I've learned is by allowing that insight, that creativity into the mix, it, it, makes things better. I don't always understand it. Sometimes I've got to push myself out of a comfort zone to get there, but, but there's magic in it. And, but I think it really came down to the willingness, even if you don't fully understand, mm -hmm. I don't fully get it. I don't fully understand, but I respect and honor what you're bringing. And then that's important to you. And I think you were really good about communicating, Hey, this is really important. This is like, not as important, not a bit. It's kind of kind of optional. And so I think kind of picking up on those signals mm -hmm. was really helpful. And I think that made it fun then to kind of say, oh, well, I hadn't thought about it this way. And so we started by the end of the planning, you could almost feel the trip coming. I mean, you could, you could feel yourself like, here's what day one would feel like. Here's what day two would feel like. So um, yeah, so it was, it was a, it was a neat experience for me to kind of go through that process together. And um, certainly when we talk about the specific things we did, there's a lot of adventure in there. This was very different than, than kind of a, you know, we're going to go in one spot or we're going to follow a tour bus plan. It, it was all over. So um, <laughs> it was cool. Though. So we have our big picture perspective. All right. We're, okay. and, and initially we were actually going to spend the first week in Ireland and then go we to were, Scotland the we second were. week and not last minute, but kind of, I don't know, a couple of weeks out, three, four weeks out, maybe we shifted that and chose to, to start off in Scotland, changed our plane tickets and everything. So we'd go to Edinburgh we first did. And then hit Ireland the next week. I'm not so, sure why we did that. But we did. You, you had a reason. I, I I just had a sense. Okay. I had a sense. Okay. And Garth Brooks was playing in Ireland. That's I think might have been it. Yeah. Garth yeah. Brooks so was, yeah. there was a com combination. And uh, yeah, we just yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. You know, in the next podcast. But it was kind of this this intentional shift. And what's really interesting is that I think that ended up working out really well, um, you know, while we were there, um, Queen Elizabeth died. She, yes. And since Scotland is, uh, you know, part of the UK, that had a bigger effect in that country. And had we still been in Scotland um, during that portion of the trip, I think it it, it would have changed. It would have been very different. Um, yeah, I yeah. think it would have been different. Um, and getting around the country may have been more challenging just with the with logistically uh, if you can believe getting around the country could be more challenging than it was as you're going to talk about the roads in a minute yeah let, 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 let's just jump into that what you okay. say <laughs> so um we divided our time between between city and country 
and we spent a lot of time on the road. So we we got into Edinburgh early in the morning mm-hmm. and rented a car, and we were going to just go see how much we could pack into a day before we spent the night at a castle on his birthday. So it happened to be his birthday, got to king for a day. 55 that was 55 55 yep very very exciting yeah um i did not appreciate at all (laughs) what the roads would be (laughs) had no appreciation whatsoever so and and background i get horribly carsick i mean seriously really bad motion sickness and i've had people say oh it's just because you're a control freak or fix your root chakra and that won't be a problem or whatever and, but this has been going on since I was a tiny baby. My mom can attest to this, but I've always my whole life been very car sick. So um, driving is actually really important to me. That helps me not be as car sick. <laughs> and I learned how much I appreciate Jim as a passenger and his patience with me as a driver. You did great. Talk a little bit about it for me. Perspective. You did great. Well, you know, first the irony in this, I'm sure, isn't lost the 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 dirt road divinity curl. Yeah. By the end of the week, was was begging for paved roads. Um, but but the it two was two lane paved roads. Two, yeah, yes. it was it was less about dirt and more about the the width. The width. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wide load. Give me yeah give me, yeah. Give me where where to, where to start? So if you step back and yeah. think about it, okay, you're on the other side, right? So you're on the, the Dri- yeah. You're driving on the on the left side, the right side of the road, to the left. The left side of the road. Left side, the other, yep. the opposite side, where the opposite is. You're doing that. So you're on, you're sitting on the other side of the car. You're in a rental car you're not familiar with. They're all about a third the size of any car you'd find in the US or these little tiny cars. And then the stick shift, because they're because they're manuals, is on the left side, not the right side. So it's on your non-dominant hand. So all of these things are happening. So you're, oh, okay, I got this processing. They also apparently can't afford stoplights in Scotland. So they just build <laughs> roundabouts. So I've seen a roundabout before. But seen these right? are crazy. Like the eight ins and outs on a roundabout, it's insane. So these roundabouts, so all of these things are happening. So you kind of, you're like kind of dealing with that. And then you, 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 we start going and we're headed toward the country. So initially we're like, okay, roads are, we get all it. And, and we're like, we pull off on a road, which is a highway, like a state highway. That's, it goes down, it looks like a, a tiny little third road. It's paved. This tiny skinny little kid's like, this can't be the right way. This can't be the highway. It's like, no, this is like one of the better roads in Scotland. And it was two lane. I mean, two it way. was two lane. Two way. And, and, and so, and then make it, and then what's great is you're driving along and, and you're in this kind of really skinny line. And then, and then, a, then a road sign comes up, which tells you the lane's going to get skinnier. That was my favorite part. It's like, it's not skinny enough. So they literally have road signs that look like this and they should, so then it gets skinnier. And then the other thing is instead of shoulders, like if any, if there are any West Texas listeners, like people that 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 live in West Texas or anywhere where there's a shoulder, there's a courtesy that when someone comes up behind you, you pull over on the shoulder to pass. Well, there are no shoulders. Not only are there no, no shoulders, but they build stone walls, probably several hundred year old stone walls, right next. It's right next to the road. Yeah, or hedges or, or hedges. whatever. It's right there. So it's insane. I'm having PTSD. I'm just just listening talking about it. about it. Yeah. So claustrophobia and motion sickness and just all that, you know, anxiety yeah. going along with that. And so, you know, I jumped in the, in the driver's side first and, um, you did, and I didn't appreciate until later <laughs> in <laughs> Ireland, how traumatic that must've been for you as a passenger to be riding with a new driver not a new driver, but a new driver in this circumstance. Um, but because my goal was honestly to try to keep you from having to melt down or like soil in your shorts because I was just like, I don't know, this could happen. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's very much a team. It's a team effort because see, on top of all of that, we don't know where we're going, right? So we don't know where we're going. It, you don't know about internet. So I'm trying to manage the GPS and figure out where we're going. Is it the fourth or the eighth exit off the roundabout? Don't know, you know. So so it became very much a team effort yeah. to um to really pilot this thing. So you have pilot and a co-pilot, and you're just kind of he was an excellent communicator and I so fantastic at navigating. You know, the good thing, thanks to the spreadsheet, we knew at the end of the day where we were trying to go. And so we were kind of identifying, well, between here and there, what are the points of interest that feel 
good, you know, that we want to actually go to. And one of the things I love that we did was um, we would just ask people rather than be yeah. like so committed to this, you know, written in stone plan. We just asked folks, what's cool. Uh, and I think that, you know, going back to the planning, um, it is interesting because we knew we, we kind of had a sense of what we want to do. We knew where our hotel were. So we book our hotels. So we knew, but in between, I, I think we really embraced that idea of let's see where people guide us. Yeah. I mean, we really did. I think we both did that. And even though we had a sketch, um, that made all the difference. So if I were to give advice to anybody, one piece of advice, it's, it's get to know the local people, yeah. really listen. And then when they give you ideas, go for it, just mm -hmm. go explore. And that, that really took us on some of the mm -hmm. best adventures were just, Oh, well, have you thought about this or try this? And they were all really willing to do that. And, but, it, but it was, it was having the plan, but then willing to abandon the plan mm -hmm. in a way yeah. that coexisted together, I think beautifully. Yeah. yeah. And one of the, one of my favorite things about Scotland, I mean, first of all, please understand it is one of the most beautiful countries I have ever seen. I mean, the yeah. countryside and the topography and, and the vast range, like the diversity of, of just view was unbelievable. I, I mean, just absolutely unbelievable. We had incredible weather while we were there. It was like sunny almost every amazing. single day when yeah. we were there, beautiful blue skies. And, um, so it, it was just a beautiful country. But equally as impressive to me was how beautiful in spirit the people were. Uh, the, some of the yeah, friendliest, great. nicest people I have ever encountered. Yeah, Scotland in particular, you know, we we were obviously tourists and and um, not just tourists, but Americans, because there are a lot of European tourists that come there mm -hmm. as well. And um, they just really embraced us like they were yeah. they were glad to have us there. You know, yeah. you know, you really felt welcome. You really felt um they they wanted you to enjoy they were proud of their country they were mm -hmm. proud of their history they wanted to tell you about it um that was really I didn't expect that yeah. that was really cool and and again that led to all kinds of adventures as we we followed their guidance yeah, yeah I, sure. I love that part and and Jim is great about meeting people I mean just striking up conversations and and developing connection in such a way that people then are are I think even maybe more free to share and to give thoughts and ideas and, and suggestions. You're really good at that. It's that nervous talking thing. Yeah. <laughs> that, that does it. Yeah. So I just kind of have to keep going. And so it translates, um, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, I kind of got that from my grandpa actually. So um, yeah, he was that way. And I remember we'd go camping and he'd always, and it was and I'm like, what are you doing? And, and now I get it, you know, now I get it. And, um, but that was really fun to, to, to meet the people and hear their stories and, and, um, yeah, you know, there, there's so much of see, of reading something in a book or seeing okay. something in a museum, but when you're when you're there, and we, there's several examples of this, but where you're with the people mm -hmm. that have grown up there and they're yeah. talking about the history or they're talking about the land, it's it's so different, and to get to know them. So um, yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah, and and so the first day we jump in the car, we go. I, I think the first thing we encountered were these like hundred foot tall steel sculptures of horses yeah the kelpies in mm -hmm. falkirk they were gigantic they were gigantic and it's one of those things that you can see pictures of the kelpies on the internet or whatever mm -hmm. totally doesn't do justice to how big these things are mm -hmm. and it, it, it was in honor of like the water spirits in in scotland there's still very much a connection to um I, I, what some would call the folklore, I guess, of, of the country, but, or the old ways, you know, however, however you choose to look at it. But um, the idea that every water body in Scotland, and there are many, have water spirits to go along with them. And in this case, the water spirit, the horse, the, you know, the Kelpies. Mm -hmm. And so they honored them. And I thought that was really cool to honor, to honor that in these huge sculptures that were really cool. And while we're there, somebody says, oh, you should go check out the Falkirk wheel, which we hadn't heard of. Well, and even, even to, to put more color to that. Mm -hmm. So there was a lady walking her dog, right? I mean, she's yeah. out walking her dog. And so we're, I ran over to get a picture of I myself with a, get a, with a unicorn. With a unicorn. Because unicorns, y'all, they're all over Scotland. Sorry. Of course. <laughs> of course. So we're over, this is getting the picture with the unicorn. <laughs> there's a little, there's a person walking a dog and she's just walking. So of course I'm striking up a conversation with her. Hi, nice dog. How you doing? And she's from there. And she starts, you know, sharing the the different things to do. And we're like, well, we don't we don't really know what we're going to do next. And here's kind of our plan. But what do you think? And she goes, oh, you need to go see the Falkirk Wheel. So I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that is. And she started talking about it. And sure enough, 
we go over and see this this thing called the Falkirk wheel and it's this engineering masterpiece yeah. they're basically two different level canals mm -hmm. and they built this machine to take a boat and lift it up to one canal and then it's this big kind of flywheel that rotates and uses almost no energy at all it's amazing so that was that was a ton of fun and so we went and did that next and the engineer in him totally fascinated by this yeah i thought incredible. it was cool too but i mean just seeing him light up you know here i'm lighting up about you know sculptures to water spirits you know and he's lighting up Which about cool about engineering piece. yes which which was great you know and and i love the fact that both of our interests could be contained in one trip and honored and respected and seeing you light up would, would just bring me joy like yeah. the things that lit you up I'm like yes you know and I think it was Vice the same for you. yeah yeah it was the same I think that yeah. that really made all the differences um to be able to see things through someone else's eyes and yeah. see the joy that they're experiencing um because they've got a different perspective and a different you know, different things that kind of light them up, but it, it's fun yeah. to see that in, in you too. So um, yeah, it was cool. Yeah. So then we went on a castle, on a castle I'm hunt. We, did. we ended up going to Sterling. To yeah. So Sterling Castle, which was huge and beautiful. And we had no idea until later, the connection between Sterling Castle and the, and the castle at Edinburgh. I didn't know that. Yeah. There's so many of those puzzle pieces that came together, even yeah. in Ireland. You know, oh, yeah. we'll talk about Iona and all the things there and, and you go to Ireland and all these things start to come together yeah. that we didn't know. And so every, yeah, the, the way that Sterling and the castle there was was sort of an, an important key strategic yeah. defensive um, stronghold, we, we learned later. Mm -hmm. um, but it was cool. Now, I'd love to share just a little bit, or I'd love for you to share, actually, because uh -oh. I think this is so adorably cute. <laughs> okay, okay, so it turns out um, I have a fascination at, with like ancient, ancient history. We're talking, you know, thousands of years BC. And Jim has a fascination with medieval history. Mm -hmm. Of course, mine was rooted in initial, you know, fascination with ancient Egypt and then, you know, out to others. Your fascination with medieval history, which included a lot of college work, yeah, by the way. It did. It did. Kind of got it, sparked in a different way. It did. Well, probably started even as early as grade school in fantasy and science fiction and read Tolkien's works and, and lots of sci-fi fantasy stuff and, and got into that. And then um, later in junior high, high school in Dungeons and Dragons and um, had a lot of fun. Um, in fact, my best friends and I would get together on Saturdays and and play all day and, and get deep. So um, it's that engineering mentality. You wouldn't just learn what a sword was. You'd learn the type of steel and the type of, whether it was chain mail, mail or plate mail or anyway so all those things became fascinating and interesting under that context of a mm -hmm. game by the time I got to college um even though I was studying engineering I I really kind of fell in love with a lot of that stuff in history so I studied medieval history in college along with engineering so there's always sort of an interest you know King Arthur was another kind of passion through through reading a lot of different King Arthur type stories so it's always been a fascination of mine um but yeah it's kind of rooted in um fantasy science fiction dungeons and dragons um yeah that kind of stuff but um it to see that like there was a point at which this was kind of later in the trip we were staying at a castle and and i and i was able to pick up a thousand year old sword like a thousand year old sword sword from the iron age and i'm holding it in my hands and i was just like right there back and as a kid in those experiences again it was it was cool yeah so there I, you go there's my story I love that I mean because our interests always come from somewhere and so learning that about you on the trip I knew that you'd taken a lot of classes in college that mm -hmm. were medieval history oriented I didn't know the Dungeons and Dragons connection and I learned that <laughs> But you were, he would evaluate the castles to see how <laughs> siege proof they were. <laughs> this is really important. It's, it's just, very important. So when you when you see a castle, of course, the, the first thing that should come to mind is how hard is it to take the castle. So you're an, you're analyzing. Of course, maybe it's just me. You know, <laughs> what angle would I come at at, and what would I use ladders? Would I use catapult? You know, what would I use? And so you, these are important questions. <laughs> siege questions. Siege Does questions. not everyone ask siege questions when they see a castle? 
Perhaps. And if they don't, maybe, they maybe should. this will inspire them Let to do so. Let me know. I can, I can hook you up. Because this, this, this was a lot of our conversation uh, in many of the castles and <laughs> excitement was. also about finding all the cannons, yes. like oh. the old cannons. And he's got a special history and, and connection and fascination and love with cannons. This is true. Yeah. And so we had to take pictures of him snapping by, by many cannons um, in honor of his old days. Yeah. On three. On three. On yeah. Three. Yeah. So um nobody will know what that means. Yeah. For like, those of you who very have confused any right now. Con any connection to the University of Oklahoma, <laughs> we might of old trusty. Yeah. You can you can look that up. Look yeah. it up. Yep. So siege siege capacity and keep uh, castles. Um and we also the castles there are very different in terms of some are ruins of castles, some are castles that have have been meticulously refurbished and are all, almost more like palaces, you mm -hmm. know, than than we think, you know, old fort castles, you know. Right. Yeah, and and it's 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 interesting because I, I think the way the history had worked is it started as as you know sort of very very simple forts. Mm -hmm. way way back and then on those similar grounds of strategic importance they build more stone castles and things that you might think about as a castle like from arthurian times mm -hmm. would be five six hundred a.d most of the castles that, that you probably encounter are more like 1400 um some of them had to do with skirmishes kind of in the landscape but then what happened was as as peace kind of settled in they would take those same locations and convert them into palatial estates or some were destroyed because they were they were dangerous to the, the the folks around so what was fascinating is different people would restore them back to certain eras mm. some would try to get them all the way back to here's what it was like in medieval times others you know this is where the queen comes and stays and they would they would show you that and so it's fascinating to see all these different periods of history in the castles and and my preference was kind of the medieval period but then we mm. saw some amazing art um i think it was um Oh, in Dublin and in, mm -hmm. in, in the castle in Dublin and but there was something different and yeah. unique to see in each castle maybe from a different era or a different perspective so yeah. um yeah yeah and you know so for example we went to um was it Dune yeah Dune Castle Dune. so that was still on the first day and and the reason okay so I had never heard of the Outlander series I, I didn't know it existed came across I knew that we were going to Ireland and Scotland mm -hmm. saw the books in you know a half price bookstore somewhere and thought huh maybe I should do some reading before I go and um then came across the series and kind of love the series I'll, I'll admit I mean I'm so That's glad that cool. we watched the series before we went to Scotland that, that was really cool mm -hmm. but Dune Castle was one of the castles that is actually featured in the Outlander series so of course we wanted to go see you know what what the story was there and mm -hmm. Jamie Jamie narrated the audio tour of that particular castle, which was very exciting for me. Maybe not for you, but uh, it was very exciting. Are you, you gonna Are you gonna tell the the Outlander girl story? Uh, well, yeah, because she's gonna be a guest. On the I know, podcast I know. Too, I thought so. that's where you're going. That yeah, was a well, different castle, actually. Well, and that that was yeah. kind of the point that I was getting ready to get to is that Dune Castle was was still very rustic. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not like it was inhabitable at that you know when we saw it no um it was it was very rustic and then the next day we on on just a total whim we're Complete driving limb. we'd never heard of Blair or at least I'd never heard of Blair we Castle. saw a, a sign on the side of the road yeah it was not it was on our castle. spreadsheet but it's a Blair Castle and we're like huh it's on the way let's go and so we went to Blair Castle it was one of our very favorites awesome. it was so cool lots of cannons <laughs> lots of cannons it was it was really incredible yeah it, it, it was it was amazing and uh you know we ran into um they had great not tour guides per se but people that were stationed in in each room that would kind of give the history of, mm -hmm. of the artifacts and and the art and furniture and different elements of, of that particular room but also ran into Haley mm -hmm. who is an outlander super fan and who and we'll we'll get to her story but we'll let her tell her story well and, and she podcast and we didn't know that at first because we were kind of walking through the rooms and she would insert little pieces of information that I found fascinating. Like yeah. I was walking through, oh, that was actually really helpful to the experience. So she would yeah. just almost like, not in a tour guide way, but she would just like throw these comments out. Yeah, and That was fascinating. And then she kind of just followed us around and I just made sure we stayed near where she was. And then <laughs> eventually you guys start struck up a conversation mm -hmm. this time yeah. about Outlander. And then 
Yeah. And, and yeah, exactly. She, you know, started sharing about how her life, she, she fell so in love with that, the Outlander series that it completely caused her to transition the direction of her life. And so she was sharing with us about that. And we got some great tips from her on things to visit the next day. Did, yeah. And, you know, but here we had, you know, Doom Castle on one hand that was very medieval rustic feeling, you know, I mean, just, I, it, you know, not, uh, th th it, it, how would you describe it? Yeah. It, I mean, what's amazing is you just get a real feel for the history. I mean, yeah. we, you know, we, I think toward the end of the trip, I think we were in Edinburgh and um, we, we toured Edinburgh Castle and there were some more history kind of things. The tour guide said, if you want more history, go to the Scotland Museum here in mm -hmm. town. So we went to the museum and we were completely underwhelmed, not because it wasn't a nice museum, mm -hmm. but when you contrast seeing, you know, those things versus being in the look being in the rooms, touching, you know, you're the experiential nature. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're feeling this, this, yeah. this waltz, you know, a thousand years old that, and it's thick and it's thick and you can <laughs> see it and yeah. you can, it's just completely different. And, yeah. and you get a different feel in, in kind of the fortress, the medieval older ruins mm -hmm. versus the palace estate. What yeah. happened there? What was life like? Yeah. How did people treat each other? What were the, yeah. you know, you, you get all of that. Yeah. So, you know, we started out and, and just starting to notice some of those distinctions. <clears throat> Um, Blair Castle was just beautiful and amazing. And the the gardens outside, oh, we went was, had a yeah. picnic under this huge tree. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it was just fantastic. But that night, um, we ended up staying for your birthday at uh, Dalmunzi Castle, Castle. And it was, I mean, it literally felt like it was kind of in the middle of nowhere. It was but that was just beautiful. because we didn't know. But it was beautiful. And apparently it, it has its own golf course it's a nine hole golf course and it's the highest elevation golf course in all of scotland mm -hmm. i guess and we went and we kind of looked at it and okay well here's here's a t and 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 <laughs> there there's there's the hole golf. on the other side of a river way down low <laughs> yeah no <laughs> golf carts no. nobody mm -hmm. uses golf carts you just mm -hmm. kind of pay by the honor system mm -hmm. you know um it was incredible. It was it's, it's so gorgeous. It was one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen, yeah. actually. Yeah. And it, it was really, and you have this castle in the middle of this. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah. It's beautiful. It really was. Incredibly beautiful. You know, the next day, I, I will admit, we made some adjustments mid-trip based on um, the roads. And so we, you got to understand driving 10 hours in a day is kind of nothing for me. I mean, I drive, make the trip between Houston and Oklahoma often, mm -hmm. you know, or, or to Colorado or whatever. So, so big, long road trips are not a big deal for me. Big, long road trips on those roads were different. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a very <laughs> different experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your, your hands at 10 and two, you know, a slight misstep and you're not just on the shoulder, but you're into a brick wall yeah. and you're not used to gauging it. So it's, it's one of those things that you, you really have to focus on. Yeah. It's, it's it, that part of it is, is very stressful. Yes. So, so we did make some, some plan adjustments just in terms of which route are we going to take um, based on roads, trying to find the better roads or decrease our time that we needed to spend on roads. So I know day two, for example, we were going to go up into, you know, the East side of this national, of this national park that, which was by Balmoral Castle. We were actually yeah. going to go by there where, you know, Queen Elizabeth passed away, but we chose not to go that direction, mainly because this other way I could have, what what did they call them? Dual carriageways? Dual carriageways. I was like, what is that? <laughs> I don't know what that is, <laughs> but it, it, it's it's a divided highway. A divided There's highway. a median and only cars go our God bless the divided direction. highway. Yeah, yeah I, did, I had no idea how much I would appreciate that. But we drove up to um, the next day up to Inverness mm -hmm. and went to the Culloden battlefield. Yeah, that was amazing. And uh, that was that was incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, ended up doing some some energetic work there, was guided to to do some work there. And I was so grateful that rather than go, the hell are you doing? They were like, hun, take all the time you need. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be over here doing my thing. You you do what you need to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I was and really you, grateful for that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, again, one of the, one of the great things about the trip is no matter what got in our way, what kind of road bumps, speed bumps, um, <laughs> brick walls on the side got in the way, 
um, I, I think just really honoring that and just really um, like that was a, that was clearly when we were there, you know, the, the, the people that talked about it, people, I can't remember who had, it might have been, I think it was Haley. He it was, we yeah, go, it was actually, yeah. I don't think it wasn't originally planned, but she suggested it mm -hmm. and talked about it being similar to our civil war sites. I mean, for, for those that don't know the history of Scotland, you know, this Jacobite revolution and, and um, you know, would England control and Scottish independence that, that, that all kind of culminated in this battle mm -hmm. where, um, you know, many, it was, it was devastating for, for that yeah. rebellion. And you can, you can really feel that energy at Culloden when we were there. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So it was, um, it was powerful mm -hmm. and I was uh, grateful to be there, but also very grateful, um, at the grace that you afforded, you know, me just in terms of being able to do what I needed to do and knowing that I had your total support. Um, but also I never felt like either one of us felt rushed mm -hmm. or like we were being a baller, you know, by paying attention to the things that we cared about. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. You mentioned early on that this was a, you know, kind of an adventurous vacation versus a, a stress-free vacation, right? <laughs> um, because we were always on the move, but there, there's something different between being on the move and being rushed yeah and feeling that sense of okay we got to go we got you know we're stressed we got to go and and you're always feeling i'm being pushed or stressed or mm -hmm. you don't get to and i i never really experienced that mm -hmm. uh, you know where we we knew where we had to get to we kind of understood but we just had the sense that we would take whatever time we needed whatever each other person felt and it might be different in different mm -hmm. cases or there were a couple times we're like eh, let's, let's go let's play yeah but but never feeling that sense of, you know, Hey, I need, I need some more time. I want some more time here mm -hmm. and having to kind of negotiate that. It was, it was always. And, and so in that way, that was a stress relief. Yeah. That was a sense of, okay, I can breathe and I can truly enjoy and breathe in the moment. Mm -hmm. And that made huge, that made all the difference Yeah. versus, you know, just let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, there there were a couple of times just with with the um with the driving, mm. and it, it, the weird thing was it wasn't so much the driving. I think it was the oncoming traffic. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was the on the huge Which double to decker not care tour about. buses yeah. that coming on sing, you know these very narrow roads. Anyway, there were a couple of times when I did just have to say, hey, if we could avoid, uh, can we just avoid certain places? You yeah. know, just for my own sanity. You were so great to go, of course. You know, I remember when we were in Inverness, the Inverness Castle is there. <laughs> and we kind of drove kind of near, but there were all these one-way roads. And I still yeah. hadn't gotten my sea legs yet. If we went yeah. back now, I'd probably be better able to navigate. But um, and so it was kind of like, okay, let's just wave at the castle <laughs> and, and go. And it wasn't, it, I don't think it was open anyway. I don't think it was open, yeah, it wasn't yeah. open anyway. But, you know, I did have some, I don't want to drive after night, you know, after dark kind of thing. So we yeah. tried to get where we were going before nightfall, mainly for sanity <laughs> and yeah, safety. Yeah. Um, so little things like that. But that day, we, you know, we drove down the entire length of Loch Ness, which was really cool. Was I cool. mean, beautiful, you know, so down mm -hmm. the entire length of Loch Ness. And it was so cute because he would, <laughs> it would be like, oh, look, oh, look over here. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. You got to <laughs> see this. Look over here. And I'm sitting here driving like this, you know, my eyes. It's great for me. Like, She's like, yeah. <laughs> enjoy it for me because I'm not looking over there. I don't care how beautiful it is. <laughs> I'm not going to look. I'm yeah. not looking. So it was the only time in my life that yeah. I kind of wish I knew how yeah. to do that whole Vulcan mind meld thing, you know, because yeah. someday I would like to see what you saw through your eyes. And I'm glad that you had the chance to to see all that. I, I just, I didn't. It was beautiful. I'm not resentful. At, <laughs> not at all. I'm glad it was beautiful. We stopped a couple and, of times. Yeah, we, we, we stopped a ton. We had to though. For yeah. my sanity. Well, that's true too. <laughs> I, mean, I, I needed to take breathing breaks. Sometimes Lama's breathing came yeah. in while yeah. I was driving, you know. Yeah. Um, but we took tons of breaks for for beauty. And and it um, was and it was everywhere. Yeah. I mean, there were times yeah. where you just be driving down a random road and then there's some church. Yeah. And it wasn't just a little church, it was, mm. you know, a 15th century church with stained glass windows and beautiful high crosses, and and it just it's not marked. It's just random. So you yeah. pull over and there were a number of times we pull over and what is, and we'd go, or, you know, we'd go on a, you know, one time we went and there was another castle that we were looking for and the bridge was out. Yeah. 
you know, and, and so I think I went and took the bridge and, and I think you meditated while I was going up there yeah. and, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful to walk and, and you just take those little diversions. Yeah. And that was wild because it was one of those times when, you know, we had no idea that it existed, even we're driving mm-hmm. down the road. It's like, Ooh, it's like, let's, let's go that way. Let's go that way. And then realize that we couldn't actually get there. Jim could on foot, but then I look over and see this, um, memorial. Mm-hmm. It, it was a, like a veterans memorial. Um, 1914 to 1918. And um, so then I get the energetic hit that there's some work that I actually need to do, you know, spiritual work that I need to do while he's off looking at the castle. So it was perfect. And what was kind of cool about that moment is, is again, I, I kind of wanted to see the castle. It was a beautiful little walk back there. And Lisa's like, I don't, I don't know that I want to go on that, 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 that bridge, which was about to fall over. And, <laughs> and Dan, why don't, why don't you go on and see the castle? I'll just stay here. And and so, and there's a part of me in the back of my mind was thinking, oh, I don't, I, you know, I feel a little bit bad for leaving her there. And, and, but I, I knew that she'd be fine and, and do her own thing. And, 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 and when I came back and, and, you know, sort of her kind of like, where, you know, she had found this and, and, and was doing her thing. And, and that was just, that was amazing, mm-hmm. you know, that we were, were kind of able to go have those different adventures and then come back and, and um, talk about both of those. So that was really yeah. cool. And yeah. I, again, I, Never felt like I I couldn't go off and just wander off in the middle of some woods. <laughs> Who knows? I guess eventually, if I had to come back, you would have come out for me. But um, and it was it was probably one of the most beautiful places of the whole trip. Yeah, I love long. that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So that night, well, we saw. I, I never know how to pronounce the the castle that you loved. Your your your. I would Urquat 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 Urquay Urquat something like that. I don't know. The, the ruins, the ruins. And they were beautiful. They were on Loch Ness. Yeah. On Loch Ness. Incredible. I mean, just absolutely incredible. And seeing you get all fired up about, about ruins. I I think you were a little skeptical because, because we were looking and it was getting kind of late and it was mm -hmm. getting close to closing. And, and, you know, that whole dark thing was coming in. We had to get there. And, and, and I'm like, I really really want to see this castle. And you're like, it's kind of just ruins. No, I, I think it's, it's, it's worth seeing. You're like, okay, let's go do it. Let's do it. And it was amazing. It was very cool. It was very cool. Yeah, it, it was very cool. And uh, yeah, so I'm glad we had that experience. And sometimes we'd have to push each other a little bit. You pushed me more, I think, than I ever had to push you. you. Yeah, you were you were always game. You're always game for whatever. Probably. And there were times that just because of logistics, isn't that weird that I would be the one to hold back because of logistics? That's so strange. Mm-hmm. Um, But so... So that was a beautiful experience. Spent the night in Fort Augustus, I believe. The next morning, drove out. Oh, saw the Eileen Donan Castle. That, that was cool. cool castle. Yeah. So this There's is a castle. So many castles in Scotland. Yeah, that is um, featured on uh, like James Bond movies. It's mm-hmm. been in a lot of movies. Highlander, I think it was in Highlander. Highlander, James Bond. Um, oh gosh, or some others, but um, one of them was Monty. What was the Monty Python? I think that was Dune. Was actually. that Dune? As yeah, well, that was Dune. Yeah. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of tie-ins with films. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're, they're, I, they I kind of lose track of all of them. Yeah. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah so that castle amazing. was super cool. And we went there on our way out to the Isle of Skye. Mm-hmm. So Isle of Skye was a place that I hadn't, I hadn't heard of, but as I'm doing my little pendulum thing, you know, you I get, I hadn't, hmm. no, I get the hit that, you know, we need to, we need to stay not just, not just visit Isle of Skye, but actually spend the night and spend, you know, enough time actually experiencing Isle of Skye. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't sure why. And we get there and we're driving. And first thing we do is head out to the fairy pools. Again, folklore and fairies are still very much kind of a part of, of culture. They are. Yeah. And so we head down to the fairy pools and the roads were ah, real very narrow, very narrow. And and actually quite a bit of traffic. And the speed limit was still like you know 60 miles an hour you know at least we're still yeah. miles an hour at this point yeah yeah um, it's, it's great to look on the gps and they said the speed limit on this road is 60 miles an hour and it's this little tiny <laughs> one lane road that you're barely with going 10 miles an hour yeah. two-way traffic and you're like what's this 60 miles an hour <laughs> so we the ferry pools were beautiful there was a long hike i mean it was it was a long hike this is where we encountered midges for the we, first we, time. We met the wee beasties. Yeah, the wee beasties. So locally. I thought mosquitoes in the Houston, Texas area were, you know, if we can deal with that, we can deal with anything. Um, no, midges are a totally different thing. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I would look down and have like 50 of them all over my arms. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I blew some out my nose when we were done. We both swallowed midges. I'm certain they were in your eyes. Dinner was the midge. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Our protein for the day right there. I think so, yeah. Yeah. So that that was the only damper, but it was interesting because part of the opportunity, I think, was to see can we still experience joy? Mm-hmm. Because that was kind of you you were in for wonder, right? That mm-hmm. your value wonder. And I just wanted to see how much joy can we experience right. on this trip. And so, and it had been such a joy-filled day. Mm-hmm. And then there was the hike and the hike was, um, there was, there was some elevation change, there was. which kind of took us a little bit by surprise, but it was, it was all right. Okay. We, hung, we, in we hung in there. We did well. And then the midges came and it was like the gate, the, the joy gatekeepers, you know, kind of, are you serious that you want to experience joy? Can we talk <laughs> yeah, we'll you out of it? You. Yeah. yeah. Ha, ha, let, let's see. Let's see. You know, when you're pushed, can you really still experience this joy? Mm-hmm. And we did. Yeah, it was a little, it was a little more of a challenge, but but we did, we but there. it was gorgeous. There were all these waterfalls, you know, from water that was coming down out of the mountains mm-hmm. that would create these fascinating little pools. And a guy in the, at the bed and breakfast that we stayed in and, and he's told us about it. Yeah. He told us, he was like, you got to go. And he was like, and, and legend has it that the seventh pool if you stick your face in the seventh pool and stay with your face under for, for exactly seven, seven seconds, seconds, then you'll have like eternal youth or something. eternal beauty, eternal beauty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was, I, I'll, I you didn't, get I didn't uh, yeah. I'm not sure if we got to the seven. There I, were some people yeah. trying. There were some people, there was the one, I wonder if that's the one that was really deep. Like there's one there's a huge waterfall yeah. and there's a pool and you had to kind of walk all the way in to get to it. And there were some people attempting it, but we didn't yeah. do that. Yeah. We were battling the midges. We were battling midges. And, you know, we didn't get yeah. but, but it was still beautiful. Yeah, it was absolutely beautiful. And that night we drove up and we stayed in a pod. <laughs> in, a, in a little tiny We went from a castle pod. to a pod. Yeah. Yeah. Castle to a bed and breakfast to a pod. Yeah. And it was the cutest little it thing. It was cute. And, and some of that was intentional. Well, it's yeah. all of it was intentional. So we, when yeah. we, we laid out the plan, we wanted to experience the extremes. We wanted to stay at a little local bed and breakfast. We wanted to stay in the castle the pod was kind of we didn't do a hostel we did not we we want to stay in the same room too (laughs) yeah that's the only thing we didn't do and i think that would have been fine but um but yeah so the pod was fun yeah it was beautiful and it overlooked the fairy glen which i thought what is a fairy glen well first it overlooked these fields that were filled with sheep and so the sheep sheep. serenaded us they did oh gosh and the stars oh oh my gosh the stars it was clear there were no clouds believe it or not in scotland um the stars were beautiful and again one of the best parts about that was then next morning so we stay in the pond yeah. we've decided there's another hike that is is we're like ah, we're not going to do that hike. We're, we're overlooking this area and we were going to skip it and because ahead. we found a cast another we castle found another castle on the far side of the island that we wanted to go to so we're gonna go to the castle and we're skip the hike yeah and i was just concerned that from a driving perspective and timing wise we had a long drive ahead of us that day. Right. Except that. Except. Go ahead. Go ahead. We talked. We talked to George Georgiana. George, I think. George, Georgiana. George, George, Georgiana came out as the we host. were leaving the host and struck up a conversation. And so she was. She was so sweet. She was adorable. Yeah. And so we talked to her, and and um, she said, "You've got to go do the hike. Like you don't want to miss the hike. It's really worth it." And so, like, okay. So and and she was right. She was totally right. It was. Jimmy got to play King of the Mountain. I got to go. He Climb hiked way up high and yeah, did do high thing. Yeah. Hi- yeah. Oh, oh, in the tree. Sorry. This, this was our whole trip. This right here. Oh, oh. <laughs> I would scare him. I think. But <laughs> so we hiked and Jim hiked up high things and I found trees. Mm-hmm. And um, and this might not seem relevant for anyone else, but in this one area, there were these three trees. And these three trees, I, I cannot explain it other than these three trees just seem to completely exude joy. Mm. Like the energy that I felt off of them, it was just like they were standing there that their whole purpose mm. was just to exude joy. I had never felt that particular energy mm. before. In fact, I had worked with trees in the past that held a lot of pain and and um, mm. like memories of sorrow and suffering. And so to feel these trees that just exuded this joy, that 
that yeah. that was magical for me. Yeah, that 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 was time. really really phenomenal. So we were glad that we listened. We were. Yeah. And once again. Yeah. Once again, we were steered in the right direction. Yeah. And so the next day we drove Dunvegan Castle, which was also phenomenal. We took our first, anything you want to share? I mean, it was. No. no yeah. Another, good. another, I mean, it was an amazing castle. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad we did that because we, yeah. we were talking about, we went to the west side of mm-hmm. Sky and yeah. down and it was yeah. beautiful over there. It was gorgeous. Along the coast. So, yeah. um, nope, that was another cool castle. Yeah. So th- then we took our first ferry ride. Which was kind of exciting. That was, and that was another recommendation yeah. we weren't going to do. And who read, somebody recommended that? I can't remember um, at all. But but you know, again, we were talking to somebody, and they said, "Oh, why don't instead of going down, might have been at the bed and breakfast. Yeah. Instead of going down the one way we thought we were going to go and around, go, go over here. It's a little quicker, and you get to take a boat ride. Yeah, take a boat, and it cuts like an hour. It off cuts your, like an hour or so of off driving drive, off. Which was I'm like, hallelujah, you know. Yeah. So we did that and that was fun. And we had a food on the, did we, see a dolphin? We, we saw a dolphin. We saw a dolphin. That's right. We saw a dolphin while we were on the ferry. That was very exciting. Mm-hmm. And um, so that was cool. Yeah. And then that night we stayed at the Witchwood um, bed and breakfast, Witchwood house yeah, in Oban. Which was really nice. Yeah. It was, really, really nice. oh, we walked in this room after we'd been in this pod. Uh, yeah. It was like this big, this room is huge, it's huge. It's huge bathroom. And it overlooked the bay mm-hmm. and the sunset. Oh, the sunset was phenomenal. And we walked and walked and walked into town, had good seafood. Had good seafood. Yeah. It was a long walk. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the next morning we got up and, and had to meet a boat very early because we were going on a three island tour to see the Isle of Mull, um, Staffa Island, and then also um, Iona. Iona Island, the island of Iona. And that was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. And yeah. um, I, I, it, what's interesting about Iona so, well, let me talk about Staffa first. So, so they're, they're all different. So the Isle of Mall, Isle of Mall's a big island, um, not very populated, a lot of farming country, similar to Sky. We took a bus across that. I took a dram of me. She took a dram of me <laughs> and went to sleep. <laughs> but but you got to see a lot of farm country. You, the Isle of Staffa was was beautiful. So it it to me it reminded me of the the cliffs of Mar at in Ireland, but mm-hmm. but an island version of that yeah. that you got to go see, and that was beautiful and, and an amazing trip. But I didn't, and this this is where Lisa really ha, ha, has brought her perspective. I, I didn't appreciate some of the beauty that was were in some of the more deeply spiritual locations like Iona. Mm-hmm. And I really thought Iona was amazing. And we did not appreciate until later, even when we got to Ireland and talked about um, how Iona was so critical um, to the spread of Christianity throughout um, Ireland and Scotland and, and historically the monks and the Vikings, there's all kinds of history there, but, but just getting to go to Iona and see mm-hmm. the history there on the island itself was, yeah. was incredible. I mean, it was just, yeah. it was crazy. One of the things I loved at Iona, we went to the Abbey and, you know, I did some energetic work mm-hmm. there and when I go to places like that, I, I can feel the energy of different places. And sometimes I'm guided to do certain things. Um, but the, the architecture was amazing. The history was phenomenal. The energy was fantastic. And it felt like, um, like in the early days and we're talking, when, when, was it like 580? Something, or, yeah, it was, yeah, I mean, it, it was, was early, it, early, early. Um, but the, the difference in perspective and purpose behind, um, behind the the word that was being shared, I, I, I guess. It, it was just really fascinating. And the community there at Iona, one of the things I loved is that they had created um, their own kind of um, book to guide their services. So um, it, I think it was, was it an Episcopal church? I, I can't, I can't remember. Um, I, I can't remember, but they had created their own like prayer book and, and, mm-hmm. and book to guide their services. And so I picked one up cause we're in the, we're in the main, you know, the, the main hall and I pick one up and I just, when I pick up a book, I'll just say, okay, open it to the page I need to see, you know? Right. And so I just opened it up and I'm reading this portion of the service and it's just going all through me at how beautiful and inclusive and just light filled and honoring of love and people and humans and differences. And, and it was just so phenomenal. So I'm taking pictures of pages of their book and I meant to buy the book before we left. And I, I failed to in the gift store, darn it. Maybe I can order one. Yeah. But it was, it was beautiful. I I was, 
there was something in me that was just kind of um, reinforced good goodness and light, I guess. Um, yeah. And that things don't have to be the way they were a hundred years ago or 300 years ago or 900 years ago or 2000 years ago that we can allow our perspectives to evolve with us as we do. And it seemed like that's what they had done through the creation of this book is allowed their perspectives to evolve in, in, in a really beautiful, inclusive sort of, sort of way. Yeah, it, it really was beautiful. And it, it's, it's a, a reminder for me, as I think about all the history and all the things that have happened and, and, and there's a, there's a very violent past and a lot of, yeah. a lot of kind of bad things that, that, like we, don't, we don't have to experience that. You know? We don't, we can choose not to. We're, we're in, a, in a place where those battles have been fought. Those things have been done. But the opportunity is to to make choices. And and I think yeah. for them, they, they had a very, very hard life. Um, and they made, you know, kind of made those choices to spread that word. So you yeah. feel that there. I mean, it really is yeah. very much an origin story kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah it was beautiful. St. Columba, um, if you're interested in the background of Iona, St. Columba was the the person, the monk who I guess who who started who started the abbey and and um just through some of the works there. Even, you know, later we went to see the Book of Kells mm -hmm. um at the at Trinity College in Dublin and had no idea that there there is a theory that the Book of Kells actually may have been started at the Abbey in Iona mm -hmm. way back, you know, before it was then secreted over to um yeah. A monastery at, at, at Kells. Who knows? I mean, who 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 know? I, they don't know. They, they don't, don't know, know, but that's what they think. And, 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 there and are that other made books sense as well. to yeah. me. Yeah, that made a lot of sense to me. So that that was really powerful and important for me. And while you know the history is is super fascinating to Jim and, and to me too, the spiritual aspects and and those stories and those challenges and battles and learning that the Vikings came in and basically slaughtered sixty eight monks right there. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. um, it, just learning about that, but also feeling feeling the energy, and then seeing how things progress and continue was was fascinating to me as well. Yeah. Um, and one of the things on the way back on the bus, I was awake enough from the drama meet yeah. <laughs> on the way back that I actually got to you know see some of the countryside. Um, and for those who who don't who don't believe in reincarnation, this may feel a little far afield. But for me, I've had many like visions of, of past life experiences. And, um, and I'll talk about this some in, in the Ireland conversation too next week, but most of them have ended poorly. <laughs> I mean, have ended pretty traumatically or have had a lot of trauma involved in them. Um, the only one that I could ever remember that just felt super positive, like healthy and happy and joyous and just connected and everything else was um, I saw this vision from, from Scotland mm -hmm. and, um, and just knew, just knew that it was Scotland like hundreds and hundreds of years ago. I have no idea what the time frame was, mm -hmm. but when we were driving back on the bus on the Isle of Mall, I looked over and it was exactly, it was like exactly the place that I had seen mm -hmm. in my, in my vision of that past life, wow. like the one and it just really touched yeah. me. I mean, it was just, it just wow. really touched me. Um, and it was nice to connect with that kind of, of positive past memory where, mm -hmm. you know, it was a lifetime where, you know, lots of healing, lots of connection with the land, with the animals, with the people. Um, and it was pretty, like, I could be who I was without fear of being persecuted for who I was. It was the gist and um, in a beautiful setting. And so that, that was a really cool experience cool. for me. And that's not the kind of thing that I think probably 99% of the people visiting Scotland are probably going to be thinking about, but um, maybe, maybe, I don't know. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. I mean, it, it certainly hits you in different ways. I think if you're yeah. open to it and you're open to just not just seeing it, but feeling it, mm -hmm. you know, wh whether it's the history, whether it's the people, whether it's the natural beauty, whether it's the yeah. architecture, um, there's so many different things to take in. I think you have to choose how you want to absorb it, right? Mm -hmm. Do you do you take it in? Do you absorb it? Do you do you feel joy from that, or do you just get to the next thing, yeah. right? Oh, we've oh, got to get yeah. to the next thing, and and so 
I, I think that was a real testament to it because it was all wonder to me. I mean, it was all this is, you know, the, the, the I didn't have an appreciation for some of the history around the spiritual places that we went. And I really could feel that, you know, both through your eyes and, and what you're feeling and, and other people. And so just that was what was amazing. Mm-hmm. But I think ultimately you have to choose. How do you, how do you see those things? How do you, how do you, are you able to breathe them in um, or not? You know, I don't know. So that night, thank you for that. Mm-hmm. That night we ended up staying in Barkledine Castle and eating dinner. Oh, that was a great dinner too, yeah. <laughs> first, oh, first, before we talk about food and, and that, Jim basically got a challenge to eat haggis. I did. And black pudding. I did. One of my one of my good friends from, from I say high school, really grade school, but from, from he, uh, he challenged me to eat haggis and, and black pudding. He didn't challenge black pudding, but I think that was probably in there. You were just brave. And I loved it. It was great. For those that have not tried haggis, put it with black pudding. They go together really nicely. Put them on a bun or without a bun. Doesn't matter. It's delicious. He enjoyed his haggis and black pudding. Don't ask what's in it. No. Just don't do it. It's yeah. kind of like bologna here. Just, you don't ask. Um, but it really was good. I admittedly took a couple bites and, and decided to stick with eggs. Okay. <laughs> Just okay. All right. Uh, more um, more ham like bacon for me, please. But uh, but um, I'm a fan. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm yeah. a fan now. So uh the castle was incredible. It, it was it really, really was. again, it was one that was more it, it wasn't all fancified. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was it was a bit more rustic, still very like stately, but in a different it was nice kind of but it was way. It, it, it reflected more, I think, um uh more of a medieval yeah flavor to it i guess for lack of a better term yeah um, yeah it cool. was cool it yeah. was super cool it was super cool but, but they, they, didn't, they didn't have dinner they didn't have dinner and we were starving and i was not going to drive after dark back into town because it wasn't gonna happen mm. so um we got a suggestion again again and went to the place and put it into our gps <laughs> which, which didn't, didn't help us where, at all we we yeah show up to this road that says you basically your sat nav is wrong <laughs> You do yeah, not want to there, be here. There's a literal sign. <laughs> yeah. Don't believe you're sat now. <laughs> so this has happened before, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So we're like, well, what do we do now? So we call the place and <laughs> and talk to the lady there, and she guided us in, and and we get we get to this little very humble, yeah. very humble little place, and they had Harry Coos. They had Harry Coos, which we didn't Highland think existed. House. Yeah. Because I, I was beginning to doubt there was a, we did, we did see some in kind of a fenced in area at Culloden, but I, uh-huh. I didn't count those because they kind of imported them for tourists. So I don't uh, really count. are still Harry Coos they get to count. So, but this was, this was a, a legit Harry Coo in, in its natural environment. So, mm-hmm. who, which we came back the next day to see, by the way. Um, but that night, this little, this, this, this um, husband and wife were running this little place. And I think there was maybe two other couples and one of the other couples left. There's one other couple in there and they were playing Beatles music and Neil Diamond music and, and, you know, these great tunes. And she called it, what'd she call it? Shoulder, 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 bopping music. Shoulder bopping music. She was adorable. She was loving. And that was a fantastic dinner. So that was one of my favorite dinners. The steak whole time. pie, steak pie. So good. I don't remember what I had, but it was. Well, yeah, the steak pie. The steak pie? Yeah, we both had it. It was delicious. It was, yeah, it was amazing. so good. Yeah, but it was just the whole atmosphere yeah. of it was was fantastic and yeah was good. people were so nice so nice so after that day well we came back the next morning harry Co- i was hoping to get to pet one but we did were... come back to see the harry Coos, yeah. and we saw another couple the owners the owners yeah, of yeah. that that i guess they owned the whole bed and breakfast and her son and of course she made she said we saw you coming in the restaurant last night and we're kind of curious what you're doing i guess they don't get a whole lot of <laughs> visitors there americans i don't know but um so she was adorable and yeah they gave us more things to go do yeah so we went and did that oh but well, they gave us the encouragement for when we got to edinburgh to go to the thai restaurant which was amazing yeah so we ate thai in, in scotland only because they encouraged it and they were so right it was so good it was very modern kind of a dance club kind of vibe yeah in edinburgh who, who knew yeah it, it was fantastic so mm-hmm. we drove back to to edinburgh and had um we spent two days there and it just parked the car yeah and walked God. everywhere we were, we were yeah because we, we had a little apartment yeah there that we kind of planned <laughs> to have an apartment and so we could do laundry there's a whole little laundry store coming up but and so you could just walk mm-hmm. to all the stuff yeah it was totally walk walkable in. it was very close to the was it the medieval mile yeah that's what they called it no that was some that was somewhere else but Ed, some, Edinburgh, oh, yeah, Edinburgh cool. Castle yeah. it was very close to Edinburgh Castle mm-hmm. and then there was a cathedral there and there was yeah. all the little, little stuff you could see the witch as well the witch as well the witch as well 
uh, Rose yeah. Street. Is it Rose Street? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, with all the pubs and everything on it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so all that was good. So we're kind of getting to the end of the Scotland part. And so we're we're kind of closing out. We had this this master plan that we only brought enough clothes to do like one week instead of two weeks. Because we packed everything. Like I, I took backpacks, right? So right. we wanted to we travel light. Not, yeah, we did not check any luggage through on our way out because we had heard horror stories. And so we chose intentionally just take what we can carry. And so we got this apartment that mm -hmm. that was going to have a washer and dryer. Mm -hmm. We got there and, and you know, I, I looked down and I said, I don't know if there's a dryer here. And Lisa was convinced there was a dryer. And she was right. She was right. There's a dryer. It was all contained in the same unit. So the unit was about this big, maybe no, more like this big. Mm -hmm. And it, and it was it was a washer and dryer combo. It took about four hours for one to do, cycle to do one cycle. And at the worst part, you put the clothes in, and we thought, okay, we think they're dry. Like it's dried long enough. And you try to open the thing, it won't let you open. So it like literally at two in the morning, I'm I'm pulling. I was looking for a screwdriver, and I'm pulling on the handle. To try and open, get the, I can't get it out. That will not release the clothes until you complete the damn dry cycle. But apparently, they know better. The Germans who probably built this thing know better. So, so anyway, so so I'm like, all right, well, I'll just reset it. And if I reset it, surely that will release the clothes. Terrible idea. Reset it. It starts an entire new dry cycle. Won't let us open the door until it gets through that whole dry cycle. So by this time wrinkles are baked in the clothes yeah i mean literally baked in the clothes I just but they were do, clean I, yeah yours Mine. i'm just like i'm not I, I did i did underwear that was it and then the rest i'm like i'll just wear them again so if you see the pictures you'll see fortunately you're not a stinker um yeah, I, it, yeah it was okay yeah, but was anyway stinker. that that kind of closed out the the edinburgh portion of the program um but it wasn't but that even we we laughed like crazy about it um so even that was told a good story yeah. but that that was one of those mishaps they were just like why can't this dryer door open oh not the end though no there's no more. <laughs> but wait, <laughs> wait there's more Rosalind chapel oh okay that was so, the next morning before we fly. yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, the yeah, next yeah. morning before we fly out so edinburgh castle was cool we had great nightlife oh we saw the the guy in the pub that we, i don't know his name but the singer we listened to live music in Edinburgh for the for the first time. We did, and that was fun. We did. It was great. Um, dinner. I, so anyway, the, to the city was the great. Toto story was that day. Yes. So I'm sure there are lots of Toto fans out there because Lisa has an international audience. So <laughs> so I'm sure there are plenty of you. So I wore my Toto short, shirt, which I'm very very proud of. Very proud. And I, I got multiple Toto. people in the pubs six. in Edinburgh, six in fact, yeah. who love Toto and love the Toto yeah. shirt. Yeah, had, my, had to comment, and that that may experience. have been the joy of his entire trip with so other excited. people being as you know a, as excited. I was a visionary. Tourism. Visionary. <laughs> yes. Just saying. Yes. So the next day, we're going to Rosalind Chapel, and Rosalind Chapel. My plan had been to actually for us to participate in a church service there. Um, it's a, an Episcopal church and, and I don't think you'd been to an Episcopal church service before, but I don't recall the, the Episcopal church is like the chosen church that, that I attended when, when I did, <laughs> you know, and, and I actually appreciate, um, appreciate the Episcopal church. And so we were going to go to a service we were. and it started at 1030. And that's why we kept the car so we could drive all the way out to Roslyn for the service. Well, Roslyn Chapel, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, you know, it's the one that was that was highlighted in like uh, the Dan Brown books, like the Da Vinci Code and mm -hmm. and some others. And so there's a lot of like history and, you know, mythology, folklore, whatever around around this particular is, chapel. Yeah. And um, so I, I wanted to experience it. And it was like a comedy of errors trying to get there. It wasn't just one thing, but like six different things in a row that happened mm -hmm. to make us later and later, all none of which were really under our control. No, it was very strange. It was very, very odd. And we get there at like 1032. Yeah. And they had already closed the doors to the visitor the center. was at 1030. Yeah. yeah. So they had, after, after the Dan Brown movies and books came out, they had to build a visitor center because so many people wanted to come visit. And so that is the first kind of gatekeeper for people getting into the actual service. So they'd already closed it up. Then I realized that that's exactly how things were supposed to go. We just weren't supposed to be in the service. Right. 
we, I had other things to do. We, we, we had we other did. things to do. And so we took a tour around, around the property and, and did what we needed to do. We did. And, um, then went to breakfast, had and, a great breakfast and had more haggis and black pudding. For breakfast, yeah. So his delicious. last experience in Scotland was haggis and black pudding. Um, and then we went back and took and and had amazing. the noon tour. The tour guide was phenomenal. The history there is fascinating. I mean, when you really look at the history of this place, yeah, it was amazing. It's crazy. And yeah. you know what? What was really interesting to me, you know, it wasn't just like Vikings coming in and and fighting, you know, the Celts or, or I mean, the the monks or you know, the, the, the more pagan or Druid ways kind of being shoved out. But then there was the whole fight between Christianity and I mean, between um, Protestantism and, and Catholicism with um, the Protestant within, Reformation. Yeah, yeah. And so what had to then happen to the churches and, and the, the altars and the statues and the idols um, to be able to fit under the new rules, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, you like Jesus too, but you have to like him our way. And right. if you don't, we're gonna burn the place down, kind right. of kind of thing. Yeah, right. Um, right. So hearing about that, and and you know, here Rosalind Chapel is so gorgeous. It was allowed to to remain and not be demolished, but there were, Which is you know, yeah, it was amazing actually. But there were whole periods where it was like a horse stable. Yeah. You know, I mean, they I, used it for things other than a church. I think that was one of the most shocking things for me is these places of, of incredible significance and beauty had fallen in complete disrepair. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were grown over there. They, you know, again, they were horse stable. They were just completely discarded. And you look at them now and there are windows into mm -hmm. our history. And, you know, you look at the, the thing about Roslyn Chapel, which was unique, was there were stone carvings Everywhere. everywhere it was covered in in you know these heads of uh, all or i don't know she said there were hundreds of them yeah. and 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 apparently when they would when they would have services many of the people that would would watch the services were illiterate mm -hmm. so they would the would would use yeah it was the times the times most mm -hmm. people were probably illiterate then that they would point to the different carvings in the wall to tell different stories in the bible or whatever and it was just fascinating but but the the idea that that had just been completely discarded. Yeah. Um, but now you see so many people now are restoring those and Rosalind Chapel is, is so meaningful um, in that perspective. So that was really cool. That was cool to get to see that yeah. and hear them talk about it. Yeah. And and you never once, I mean, said, I don't want to go to church I, or I, I don't, I don't want to go see another cathedral or another whatever. And I was so grateful. Just like mm -hmm. I never said, oh, I'm done with castles. <laughs> <you know? laughs> no, you never did. And I, again, I think that it was a willingness to set aside that preconceived notion mm -hmm. and say, okay, um, the big, the biggest downside is you feel joy. I mean, at, at worst, mm -hmm. you, you know, and, and so you kind of go into it thinking, you know, maybe I'll learn something or enjoy something. And, and, and really every time we did. Right. But, but even if you don't to see that other person feel joy, mm -hmm. how is there downside in that? I mean, there's not. So I, I think that just kind of carried through the whole trip is, um, I, I love all those experiences. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing through your eyes, how you're seeing beauty and seeing the world and what's mm. important to you. So that made a lot of difference. Yeah. 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 So from a dirt road divinity perspective, you know, um, to me, there, there was a great deal of spirituality built into this trip. I mean, both from the beginning, from the, from the planning stages, you know, of tapping into intuition and being willing to allow intuition to guide us in ways that, that a travel guide's not, you know, a travel guide's just not going to tell us to go to some of the same places that we, that we went. But so from the very beginning, but then a willingness to work together, to build on our strengths, you are great at making things happen, you know, at taking ideas and, and putting them on paper and then making them happen, but also holding space for this or something better. And, um, and I'm, the 10,000 idea you, minute you, girl, you, you, you know, <laughs> you have beautiful vision, mm. you know, you you're open and, um, receive in a very unique, very special way. Mm. And it just, it worked. I mean, it came yeah, together beautiful. to work. And so Scotland is a place that I just felt at home. And maybe, yeah, I, me maybe, too. maybe I, I wasn't I very home, much did, you know, but I very I, much did too. I felt, um, 
I didn't feel like yeah. a tourist there, yeah, which was wild. Either. I was never made to feel like I was mm -hmm. an annoyance or a bother, even when I was going slow on the roads. Mm -hmm. You know, I I just the people were so hospitable and welcoming, and the land it 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 really was so beautiful and energetically it energetically it felt good to me yeah um which that for me really matters you know i mean sure there are places you know the energy at at Culloden felt different than you know energy in a, it, on isle of sky but not necessarily in a bad way either yeah and, you know i mean it 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 just felt different you could tell that there'd been a lot of trauma um and a lot of drama there um but to be able to take our two ways of operating in the world and kind of bring them together for this one, this one first leg of yeah, what ended up being one. an epic trip, I, I, I was so incredibly grateful for just the way things worked. Yeah, and for I, you I was too. as a travel buddy. Well, thank you. You were a yeah. great travel buddy. I, I think, um, you know what? Um, for those that have seen the different Dirt Road Divinity um, programs that Lisa does, and, mm -hmm. and and I've watched, I think most of them as well. Um, it's it's fascinating to me. For me, for the, for those who don't know me, coming at this from a different perspective, I I, you know, don't have sort of that 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 same past or that same approach. And mm -hmm. for me to be able to experience and feel that joy, that beauty, that spiritual connection that Lisa talks about. I, I think is is really the heart and soul of what dirt road divinity is. It's the mm -hmm. ability, um, regardless of your background, regardless of what, you know, whether you approach things with spreadsheets or pendulums or or, you know, whether you're an engineer or whether, you know, you're um, you know, a coach or whatever, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter, you know, that that you you have the same opportunity to experience the beauty, the history, the connection, um, the spiritual. Um, nature of the world it's mm. there for all of us and it doesn't mean you have to come at it from a particular approach and um and and I think just the willingness to be a part of that to listen mm. to learn and so thank you for um, being such a wonderful teacher thank you oh. wow I'm honored totally honored honored to be on on this journey with you in epic adventures and yes. and, and in life um next week we're going to talk Ireland. We're talking Ireland next week. If any of you have questions about Scotland, the things we did, the things we experienced, anything like that, please feel free to reach out. You can email anytime, uh, lisa at dirtroaddivinity.com. It's probably the easiest easiest place to, to email. Um, if you have questions for Jim, I can get them to him, you know, that direction, if, if you know, if you yeah, like. You bet. Um, but next week we talk, we talk Ireland. It was a very different experience. It was. Yeah. It, it was, was great in its own way, yeah. but it was different. Yeah, it was it was different. And so um to the people of Scotland, I just want to say thank you for being such incredible hosts. Thank you for being patient with us, for making us feel like family. I mean, we did, yeah. we just felt like family where we went. The land is beautiful. There is so much history, so much culture, so much diversity in topography, so many opportunities to engage in, in just the wealth of beauty there. Um, I really hope to go back someday. We will. The world is huge and there's there are so many places to go, but this is one place that I'd really like to go back to. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So any departing words for this week? I, I don't think so. Um no, I'm just, I, I I think we were incredibly blessed. We were safe. Yeah. Thank, thank you for, for your wonderful driving that yeah. got us around safely. Prayers every day in the car, you know, yeah. and, and that's not something I do every time I get in the car here, but there we would get in the car and I'm calling in Archangel Michael. I'm calling in, you know, all my spiritual team because we needed to stay safe. It was, it was good. And yeah. Um, yeah, so no, I'm just incredibly thankful that we had the opportunity to mm -hmm. go and yeah. Um, that we were safe and the people were the way they were. And, and uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm grateful for that. And and my goal was to experience wonder and um, it well, well exceeded my expectations. And um, I do think you're a big part of that. So thank mm. you. Well, thank you. Um, and if my goal was joy, I know you were a big part of that. So thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Yeah. It was an amazing adventure. Thank you for listening today. And uh, I hope you'll tune in again next week when we talk about our adventures in Ireland. It was a little, little different, um, also incredible. But until then, 
If you have thoughts, show ideas, um, guest ideas, please do reach out uh, at Lisa at dirtroaddivinity.com. You can also check us out on Instagram at the Dirt Road Divinity um, page there and also on Facebook. We put these video, we put videos of these conversations up on YouTube as well. And so I'll include all that information in the show notes. Uh, so easy to link to. Um, until next week, I hope you find deep wonder and also joy in the daily life. It's not just about yeah. the big adventures, but it's about the Absolutely. daily life, finding that in daily life too. And I hope that you enjoy your own unique and uh, hopefully scenic root of the soul. Bye. Thanks for tuning in for this episode of Dirt Road Divinity. If you liked what you saw, please go ahead and like the video or leave a comment letting me know. Also, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and be kept up to date when new episodes drop in the future. If you'd like to connect in between episodes, you can come uh, follow the Facebook or Instagram pages, just at Dirt Road Divinity. You can even email me with any show or guest ideas that you might have. And my email address is lisa at dirtroaddivinity.com. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to uh, you tuning in next time.